Welcome to the weekly news tracker, your go-to source for staying informed on the latest real estate happenings around the globe. We've got a sizzling lineup of six red-hot headlines to spice up your real estate radar. Let's move on to our first news, which was coming Virat Kohli. Virat Kohli leases 18,340 square feet office space in Gurugram. Virat Kohli leased office space to MYND Integrated Solutions, a global business process and technology management company at Gurgaon's Reach Kamrika building. Kohli will receive an annual rent of approximately rupee 1 crore at a rate of 48 square feet per month. The leased space is part of a mixed-use development with 500,000 square feet of retail and 180,000 square feet of office space. Kohli bought the space around a decade ago. And the building recently reached completion. Kohli owns a bungalow in DLF 1 Gurgaon and also a property in Mumbai and Aliboy. Let's move on to next news. Godrej Properties' highest bidder for Noida land with rupee 3,000 crore revenue potential. The land parcel located in sector 44 is spread over 6.46 acres for rupee 506 crore. The parcel offers a development potential of 1.4 million square feet and an estimated revenue potential of around rupee 3,000 crore. Implied purchase price comes to rupee 78 crore per acre. This acquisition marks the company's sixth venture in Noida, showcasing a strategic expansion in the region. Let's move on to next news. Maharashtra CM lays foundation of Mumbai Metro Line 12. Metro Line 12 Foundation launched in Mumbai linking Kalyan with Aloja in Navi Mumbai. Metro Line 12, which is an extension of Metro Line 5, covers a distance of 22.173 km. It is a completely elevated structure with 19 stations. With an estimated completion by the end of 2027 at a cost of around Rs. 58.65 crore, the new metro line is expected to reduce travel time between Kalyan and Taloja by 45 minutes upon completion. Residents will benefit from improved connectivity to various key locations, such as South Mumbai, Thane, Mira Bhendra, and Viran. Let's move on to next news. DLF in talks to buy projects coming up at Aerocity in Delhi. DLF is in discussions with Bharti Realty to acquire under construction phases of Aerocity in Delhi, which has a total development potential of 17 million square feet, project including 5 million square feet of retail space and once completed. The project is expected to generate an annual rental income of Rs. 5,000 crore. The first phase of Aerocity was also developed by Bharti. But later Canada's Brookfield Asset Management acquired 51% controlling stake. GMR has the lease for the entire area until 2066. And when the bid was invited for the first time DLF participated but it was awarded to Bharti, DLF Cyber City Developers, DCCDL, the rental arm of DLF is likely to take care of the asset as it already operates close to 40 million square feet across the country. Let's move on to next news. Macrotech developers raises about Rs. 3300 crore equity through QIP. The QIP was oversubscribed nearly three times within five hours of issue opening. The QIP witnessed traction from a diversified set of investors with a long-term outlook, including sovereign funds, pension funds, insurers, etc. The institutional placement also saw new marquee investors like Invesco Oppenheimer, BlackRock, Carmenac, Franklin Templeton, Nodges, Lazard, APG and RWC, etc. This is the fourth equity raise by Macrotech developers in the last 36 months and the company has raised over Rs. 13,000 crores. For the nine months ended 31st December 2023, the company's total consolidated income stood at Rs. 6385 crore and the net profit of the company for the period was Rs. 887 crore. Let's move on to next news. SEBI notifies microrates regulations move to boost transparency. Investments, SEBI has notified the regulations to govern small and medium real estate investment trusts, REIT, of income generating and completed properties that may include commercial assets, rental housing, warehousing, and hotels among others. 
minimum IEID size notified is of rupee 50 crores and the maximum size is 500 crores, the regulations allow these micro REIT to leverage with a cap of up to 49% of the value of the scheme's assets. It also mandates the investment managers to always hold a minimum 5% of total outstanding units if the same REIT is not leveraged. In case of leveraged SM REIT, the investment manager is required to hold 15% of units. These regulations will likely open a new asset class of homes to a wider audience and change the way Indians own and earn from property investments. If you don't want to miss any update of real estate around the globe, do subscribe our channel now.